Hi guys and welcome to Level Up English with me Ashley Hill. Today we are going to do a lesson on common euphemisms. Let's start with what are euphemisms? Euphemisms are common English phrases that are used for sentences that may be considered too harsh or blunt or offensive. If a sentence might be considered offensive or hurtful to someone, then native English speakers will generally use a euphemism to avoid hurting someone's feelings. Let's look at an example. Instead of saying his father died last year, which can sound quite blunt, we say his father passed away last year. So we change died to passed away. See how much nicer that sounds? So there are two reasons why you should learn common euphemisms. Our first reason is you will sound insensitive if you don't use euphemisms where they are needed. Like I explained in our example, it would sound insensitive to say his dad died, but it is good English practice to say his dad passed away. And our second reason is you won't understand much of what you read and hear if you don't know euphemisms. Now, your goal as an English student is to understand and most importantly, to be understood. Example, if your colleagues are having a conversation in English about layoffs and you don't know what layoffs mean, then you won't understand what they are talking about and you won't be able to get involved or participate in the conversation. So we need to know euphemisms in order to communicate. Okay, so today we are going to look at euphemisms that you can use for your everyday English. Before we begin, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are not yet a subscriber to my channel and be sure to turn on your notifications so that you don't miss out on any English lessons again. Great, let's get started. Let's begin with euphemisms about death. We already looked at how we can say someone has died. We can say someone has passed away. We can also say someone has been laid to rest. Laid to rest is also another way of saying dead. In a sentence, we can say Jack's father died last week. But using a euphemism, we can say Jack's father passed away last week or Jack's father was laid to rest last week. Now, if we want to say someone is dead, we can say that they are no longer with us. Example, Jack's father is dead. Doesn't sound good. Now, obviously, this sentence just sounds cold and unfeeling. So a native speaker would rather say Jack's father is no longer with us. If we wanted to refer to a dead person or if we wanted to refer to dead people, we would say departed. So instead of saying the hospital needs to release the names of the dead people, we would say the hospital needs to release the names of the departed. So the euphemisms we looked at regarding death are one, passed away, laid to rest, no longer with us and departed. Next, we will look at euphemisms about money. Now, in most cultures, it is considered impolite to just talk to someone about their financial situation. Example, we can't just look at someone and say, you look like you have a lot of money. <laughs> no, no, no. However, we can use euphemisms to speak about money. Let's look at the euphemisms that can be used for rich. We can say wealthy or affluent. Instead of saying, my uncle is a rich man, we can say, my uncle is a wealthy man or my uncle is an affluent man. The euphemisms for poor are economically disadvantaged or underprivileged. So from saying the cold, unfeeling sentence of, my classmate is poor, we would rather say, my classmate is economically disadvantaged or my classmate is underprivileged. You'll see that most people avoid using the term third world country and the more acceptable term now is developing country. 
So instead of saying I come from a third world country, we now say I come from a developing country. The euphemisms we looked at for this section are wealthy and affluent, economically disadvantaged or underprivileged, and instead of third world country, we learned developing country. Our next round of euphemisms is extremely important to make sure that you do not hurt someone's feelings or speak inappropriately. These are euphemisms about jobs and employment. Our first one for this section is to get fired. A more polite and acceptable way of saying fired is to say laid off. Jack was fired yesterday becomes Jack was laid off yesterday. If you are in charge of managing people and you need to fire people, you should avoid using the term fire. Example, don't say, unfortunately, I need to fire you today. Instead, it is more polite and acceptable to say, I'm going to have to let you go. So if you are going to fire someone, we would say, going to let someone go. Did you know that in some places it is also considered impolite to refer to a woman who stays at home and looks after her home as a housewife? The term housewife is now not very accepted. The more acceptable term to housewife is a homemaker. Instead of saying my mother is a housewife, we should rather say my mother is a homemaker. In the same manner, the word janitor, who is a caretaker of a building, is also becoming less acceptable. And so the word janitor now becomes custodian. Instead of saying I am friends with the janitor of my building, we now say I am friends with the custodian of my building. And our last one for this section is to be unemployed. Instead of saying I am currently unemployed, we can say I am currently between jobs or I am out of work. You can hear these sentences sound much nicer than saying I am unemployed. So our euphemisms about jobs and employment are laid off. The term fire becomes let someone go. Housewife is now a homemaker and janitor becomes a custodian. We have unemployed, which becomes between jobs or out of work. Next, we have euphemisms about bodily functions, which is extremely important as part of good English etiquette or good general etiquette. Let's start with needing to go to the bathroom. For this, you can say you need to use the restroom. And if you are a woman, you can also say you need to powder your nose. So remember, go to the restroom or powder your nose, which is the same meaning as go to the bathroom. Remember, when you go to the bathroom, you don't need to tell anyone exactly what you will be doing in the bathroom. So saying you need to use the restroom is perfectly acceptable. And our next one is to fluctuate or in simpler terms, we are talking about farting. And if you need to speak about this for whatever reason, you shouldn't be speaking about this, but you can refer to it as breaking wind or passing gas. Example, instead of saying the baby farted, you can say the baby broke wind or the baby passed gas. So our euphemisms for bodily functions are one, use the restroom, two, powder your nose, three, break wind, and four, pass gas. And our final part of this lesson is going to focus on euphemisms for physical appearance. So nicer ways to describe how people look. Let's start with the euphemism for fat. Guys, this euphemism is so important so that you don't offend or even bully someone by calling them fat. For men, we can simply refer to them as heavy set. Example, my father is a heavy set man. And for women, we can say plus sized or full figured. These are much nicer and acceptable terms to rather than calling someone fat. And if someone is bald or rather they have very little or no hair 
on their head, we can simply say that they are a little thin on top. Example, my father is a little thin on top. So our euphemisms for our final part of our lesson are 1. Heavy set, 2. Plus sized or full figured and 3. A little thin on top. Okay guys, that is it for our lesson today. Today we learned about euphemisms, what they actually mean and how to use them in a sentence and polite and acceptable terms to use as you engage with English speakers. If you enjoyed this video, then please don't forget to hit that like button. And if you are not yet a subscriber, then please hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you don't miss out on any English lessons. Please follow me on Facebook and Instagram and Telegram for more exclusive English learning content. And be sure to check out my website luenglish.com where you will also find a collection of free ebooks and guides to help you on your English learning journey. Thank you for your time and this is Ashley Hale with Level Up English signing out. See you next time.